And hello again. Uh, this diagram may look familiar if you watched my previous video where we went through all this and what it all means. So if you want to know what all this means then go and look at my last video. But today the subject of this episode is talking about watches that should appear in this area here. That is to say high quality and not such a high price. And what I'm going to do is to suggest three different styles of watches that may fit into this area here. First of all a chronograph, then a dress watch and then a diver. And what I'm looking for is a high quality watch uh, bought used which is now depreciated enough to make it a real bargain and yet it's still a great quality watch. Now when it comes to watches my first love is chronographs so that's what we'll start with. And I'm going to show not one but two different watches uh, both of which I think will fit into this category here. So let's bring the first one in, and it's this, the IWC Spitfire Chronograph. It's 42 millimeters. It comes with both a strap or a bracelet option. You get the chronograph and a day and date. And the one slight thing against it is that it's quite thick at 14.7 millimeters. And despite IWC calling the caliber a 79320, it's actually based on an ETA 7750 all by, modified slightly by IWC. Let's have a look at prices. But I would point out that these are slightly older models. This one here is from 2011, 12, and not the latest ones which have the open date feature. Uh, new they go for about 4245, um, but second hand in excellent condition, it seems this particular model you can get for around two, maybe two, 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 three uh, on eBay. And for me that makes a great buy because they're not going to depreciate much more assuming you take care of them and with them having a standard ETA 7750 movement inside uh, the servicing costs shouldn't be that bad you don't need to go back to IWC to get them serviced you can go to any good watchmaker and he can service that watch and repair it uh, when needed. Let's now move on to my second suggestion which is actually the one that I would go for and for my second chronograph I'll have to refer to the Bible of Zenith by Manfred Rossler, which gives you the history of Zenith. And in here we'll find a fantastic chronograph called the DeLuca. There's a Mark 1, Mark 2 and Mark 3 I think. Sadly for me these are now getting quite rare and quite valuable, uh, so they're probably gone beyond the point of being a bargain. But if you can find one at a good price and it's in good condition then by God buy it because they will appreciate I'm sure but all is not lost because after the DeLuca a similar watch was launched called the Rainbow so let's look at that and here it is here let's just get the book out and again you've got lots and lots of different choices uh, they come in stainless steel in two-tone in gold on straps on bracelets with various different options in terms of having a, a diver's bezel or a fixed bezel and, and so on now I'm not sure if you can read this but it tells you that the reference rainbow comes from its namesake a sailing ship uh, which took part in the 15th America's Cup back in 1934. I'm not quite sure what that's got to do with that particular watch but that's where it comes from. And if we turn the page we can see there are in fact some more options here. Um, gold, two-tone, uh, white dial and so on. I own the gold version um, on a strap which sadly got stolen but I always felt it was easily on a par with a Rolex Daytona and I still think that now. So for me any of these rainbow models will make it a good buy and will probably appreciate into the future. But there is one model above all else which I think is the real star of the show and that's the rainbow flyback. There's one here and one here. Now these pictures are quite small so let's close this book up and go look at the pictures in the catalogue from 2002. And so this catalogue is in German. I picked it up when I was in Baal. I think this one's from 2002. And in here we can see the then current model, uh, Rainbow Flyback. Uh, they come in a couple of versions, uh, both with a bracelet or a strap and with a standard black dial or with a more colourful dial here, which is made at the behest of the French Air Force. <clears throat> now this particular version is getting quite rare and prices are on the rise. So again, if you find one at a good price, then buy it because I don't think you'll lose money on it. But for me, I actually prefer the standard black version. And in fact, I am looking for one right now. 
They're not that common and I want an absolutely minty one, good as a new version, so I'm still looking. But hopefully I'll find one and when I do, I'm going to buy it. And looking at the specs of this watch, you've got uh, a flyback chronograph, all rainbows so are 40mm. They've got a great bracelet, far superior to that fitted on a Daytona back in the 90s. So let's look on eBay now and see how much something like this might go for. Yeah, they seem, they seem to go for about two to two and a half. Um, this one here looks more like it. You've got a El Primero there that went for £800 from Hungary. Now I wouldn't buy from abroad, I'm just going to stick to the UK uh, for safety reasons, but the bargains are out there. There is a modern version of this at the moment still on the market. It's based on the Stratos and it's I think 44mm, but that modern version um, has still got quite a way to go yet before it becomes a bargain on the second hand market. And price wise, um, the flybacks are now starting to go up a little bit. They're floating around two to two and a half thousand pounds on eBay, whereas the simpler and cheaper standard rainbows, uh, they seem to go maybe 1800 up to maybe two, 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 three, if in good condition. And whichever one you go for, I think you can't go far wrong. Now, of course, being a chronograph, when they do need work, it's going to be more expensive to serve it than a standard simple three-hander. But because this model's been out a long time and the El Primero movement's been around for a very long time indeed, since 1969, uh, parts are available and most watchmakers can deal with servicing these things, no problem at all. And so let's go back to my little graph. So in this area here then we've got the Spitfire and the Rainbow, both great watches, both underappreciated and I think a good buy. And so in the next episode of this particular series I'm going to look at divers and where we might find some great bargains and high quality watches in this area. And so until then, thanks for watching and cheers.